I was looking at um, some of the scriptures. You might have got scriptures around your house, like on the refrigerator, mirror, where you got them? You know, everywhere. Okay, Any, anybody got any of these scriptures? With God, all things are possible. You might have got any of those? Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, my sheep, this is, I'm giving you the ones around my house. You would think a pastor might have some scriptures around his house, and I do. Uh, my sheep hear my voice. That's one of the ones we have. Um, we walk by faith, not by sight. Well, that's a good one. Uh, here's, here's one you ought to jump on. Isaiah 54, 13. Great shall be the peace of my children. Our Acts 9, 32, the, the church has rest and is edified. That's a, that's a prayer we pray over you guys. Um, probably don't, you probably don't have that one on your refrigerator. How about anybody got the joy of the Lord is our strength? Yeah, that's a good one. How about there's this one? I don't know the translation. Joy has it up. And I trust her. My soul finds rest in God alone. That's a good one. Um, the ark for the saving of households. Yes. It's kind of a personal thing, but yeah, but that's <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. Anybody got that one? Yeah. Okay. And then he is the Lord, our healer out of Exodus 15, 26. Now, here's, here's a great scripture, and I'm surprised it's not on more um, refrigerators. True humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. Anybody got that on their refrigerator? We're missing it, aren't we? Ain't nobody. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, it, what's interesting is, I don't know if anybody wants to admit it, but riches, honor, and long life are what most people are after in life. Oh, don't look innocent. Y'all, it's like, oh no. Okay, how many of you have gone to your boss and said, you know what, I would like a pay decrease this year, possible, because I really don't want riches at all. I don't want any money. No one does that. Honor, to be honored and esteemed, and long life. Anybody gone to the doctor and go, how can I shorten my lifespan any at all? But I love, I love to say there's a condition to this. True humility and the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not fear he's going to hurt you. It's a reverential respect for him. And true humility is saying, God, you are right. And you are, you are, you are right. And if anyone's going to make an adjustment, I'm going to make an adjustment. How many of you know the Bible said that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble? And so I just, I just thought, I need to put this up on the refrigerator somewhere. True humility, fear of the Lord, lead to riches and honor and long life. I just thought you would enjoy that one. Since no one has it up, just gave you something new for your refrigerator. How many of you have got pictures of your kids on your refrigerator? Who's got pictures of their dogs on their refrigerator? Okay, well, I'm not even asking about cats. Don't send me anything. I'm not changing my mind. <laughs> Let's pray. We'll, we'll, we'll start. We're talking about inner health. Father, we thank you for the night. We thank you for those who made the effort to come, for those who are watching online. Father, we know that in all labor, there's profit. So we believe we didn't waste time coming. We believe, Father, that your word makes a difference in our life, that you make a difference in our life, that we worship you and honor you. And by humility and fear of you, wonderful things happen in our lives. And we thank you for that. So tonight we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who's the teacher and ask that he would reveal and instruct and shine light on things that we haven't even seen before. And we'll give you all the praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Recapping last week, we had talked about, we've been talking about guarding our hearts and guarding our inner life. And we talked last week about to guard your inner life, you need to guard your words. And so we've been talking about that a while. And uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up tonight. But guard your inner life, guard your words. If you always, again, if you ever want uh, information on that, you can always go to, to our YouTube page or the ARC, one of our apps or something. You can find it. Uh, that some words are not fitting for our new life in Christ. We talked about there's just some things shouldn't come out of us. And if we talked about how to change that. And so... Uh, what does fit is giving thanks. So if you ever wonder what to do, say, I don't know what to say. Thank God is always a good thing to say. Just ever get caught with something you just don't know what to say, you just go, <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. That's, that's always fitting. Uh, and if you're around a bunch of people that don't believe, it's, it can clear them out. 
<laughs> my pastor, John Osteen, was a fiery little guy. And uh, he, uh, he was in an elevator one time, and he got in the elevator. And this was when people, I guess, smoked indoors, and they were smoking cigars and just cussing and, and uh, just cussing and taking God's name in vain. And he just, he's in the elevator. He's a bold guy. He just lifts his hands and says, Lord, I want to praise you. I want to bless your name. Glory to God. Glory to your name. He said the elevator door opened and those guys could not get out of there fast enough. <laughs> so if you ever need to get out of a line, that's, that's just the way to do it. Um, we talked about for a blessed life, we need words of blessing. That we're, we're called to inherit a blessing, so we might as well speak blessings over other people, not cursing. And so if we're called to be blessed, then we need to be people that bless others. And so God's children are different. Let me, let me wrap it up with this. God's children are different. Philippians 2nd chapter 14 through 16. Now this is Paul writing to the church. He's not writing to unbelievers. He's writing to the church. He says, do all, thi do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so I may rejoice in the day of Christ. I have not run in vain or labored in vain. He'd leave it up there just for a second. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may be blameless and harmless. That word blameless and, and, and innocent, uh, not naive, just, just in, harmless. Children of God without fault. How many of you believe that you're, you want your kids to reflect you? You've had children. You want your children to act right. Am I in the right crowd? Do y'all want your... You want your kids acting all crazy and stuff? No, you know, now it used to be way back in the day. You kids acting crazy, you could just thump them right in the middle of Walmart. You can't do that anymore. You got to sneak around and be able to spank your own kids. And then somebody said, I can't believe you spanked them. Spanked all three of mine. Did not apologize. They all turned out well. I did not beat them. I did not hit them with a belt or a whip or I smack them in the face. They paddle. They leaned over. Matt was the tough guy. <laughs> Matt, I, I popped Matt one time. He went, Pfft. he laughed. <laughs> I said, that didn't work. I said, uh, we're going to try something new. It's called grab your ankles. <laughs> no more laughing for Matt. And Michael, Michael was outside the door. And every time Matt would get a spanking, you hear Michael go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Say, do you feel bad about spanking your children? I, I don't. I, I really don't. I didn't spank them in anger. I didn't spank them in punishment. I spanked them to teach them there are consequences to life that when you mess up, there are consequences. And I, I'm going to get off that subject now. I just, uh, I'm going to get off of it. But anyway. Going back to your children acting right. Um, we want our children to reflect us. And if you have a certain standard, a certain way that you live in your home, you want your kids to reflect that. And uh, how many of you are just are real blessed when your kids do something you told them to do and they do it on their own? You're like, there we go. That's good. That is good. That's, that's my child right there. But you know, we're God's kids. Do you know it honors him when we reflect him well? And it says here, one of the ways that we reflect him well is not complaining or arguing. <laughs> I know y'all didn't hear me. It said one of the ways. <laughs> ah. Oh, oh, we, I, I'm just reading the Bible. I write this. I'm reading this. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. That word crooked and perverse means a generation that's distorted and misled. Is there any distortion going on right now in, in our generation? Can we see that? 
And, but here's the thing. One of the things is a lot of times we're, we're launching attacks against the people who are distorted and misled and they're blind, they can't see. One of the ways they need to see is they need to see people who are different. So one of the ways we shine our light is we're not responding in the same spirit they're responding in. We don't talk like they do. We don't complain like they do. We don't argue like they do. We're children of God. We're blessed. We are blessers. Do you realize that's one way to shine our light? You know we're supposed to shine our light, right? And one of the ways we shine our light is with our words. Is that we're different. <laughs> Y'all act like I'm speaking Greek. I am. This is. We are different, yes. And we are to shine our light, yes. It's got to look different. You know, listen. It used to be people thought that being different. I'm not going to dress like you. You know, there are some, some of you, I don't, I want to, some of you come from Pentecostal denominations where you were taught you had to wear like long dresses. Women couldn't wear makeup, wear buns on top of their head. We're going to be different. Ain't nobody want to be different like that. We want to be different like. <laughs> we want to be different in our character and nature. You know, if I came in here wearing pants and be like, well, here I am wearing my pants like this. You're like, dear Lord, Alan, you're different. No, you're stupid. That, that looks ridiculous. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being different in terms of our character and nature. So we hold firmly to the word of life. So Paul was writing them. He said, guys, he said, listen, don't, don't, don't complain. Don't argue. I really believe, honestly, that Christians should be the best workers in their companies. We should be the best. And we should be the least complaining. <laughs> is, this, is this mic on? Hello? <laughs> you say, well, you know, Alan, I grew up with a whole bunch of complainers. Well, you can stop. You can stop. It's up to you. Again, realizing I want to reflect the Lord well. Yes, sir. You hear the person, your person saying amen over here? She's probably an employer. <laughs> she probably has where people working for her. Ooh. Okay, let's see if you like this. Okay. Guard your heart. Here's the next one by guarding and controlling your focus. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Again, we're going to go back to that. It's a great template on inner health, guarding our heart. And by the way, when I was talking about complaining and, and arguing, you do realize I didn't get off the subject of inner health. How many of you ever had an argument with somebody and then walked away and went, man, that really felt great. That just, that was so invigorating. I want to do that again. No, you don't. That arguing would just take it out of you. That's good preaching, Ellen. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you all the way. <laughs> Guard your heart by controlling your focus. Proverbs 4. We got that. Number. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. This is the Bible. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Now, obviously, it's, it's a little different thought. He's not talking about just, okay, okay, I'm just going to look like this. In my... He's talking about your focus. And our focus, what are we focused on? There are so many distractions that, that are available, and, and this is where our challenge is. So many distractions are available now that are focused to guard our inner life. We have to guard what we're focusing on. I don't know if you've ever been on a retreat. Anybody ever been on a retreat where they just made you like put your phone away and you had no contact with the outside world? I think the Methodists do something. Is, it, is the Methodists that do Emmaus Road? Anybody? The Emmaus Road. I've heard people have great responses from Emmaus Road. I think, I think it's a great idea, but I think one of the biggest things behind it is you got to put all your electronics away and for an entire weekend, you're just focusing on the Lord. And I want to tell you something. You talk about something that will bless you. Focusing on the Lord is, is huge. This is why we love to send these kids to camp. Because when we send them to camp, we're able to pull them away from their world and their, their online world. We're able to get a hold of these kids. And man, we can able to get, we get some Jesus into them. We can get some God into them because their focus changes. Amen. 
And when our focus begins to change, it changes a lot of things in us. I, I tell you one thing, when, when, when the power goes out, you realize how hooked we are on the internet. <laughs> power goes out, we're like, oh my God. What are we gonna do, we have to talk to one another? <laughs> Read a Bible? Yes. Just as long as we're not complaining or arguing. But anyway, um, does God's word ever come into focus? Now look at this here in, in Proverbs. This is, this is good. We've looked at this before. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. A, a focus on God's word produces life and health. I remember when Joy and I both have, have dealt with sickness and, and both have dealt with challenges in our family. And when we did, uh, Joy especially, who had just a horrible diagnosis years ago, she would get up every morning and she had, a, she had a, some three by five cards and she would flip through these cards and she's focusing on God's word on healing. Because every report we had coming to us was not good. Her health was not good. I used to watch her crawl up the steps to get upstairs where the kids were because the pain was so intense. And so she had to begin to focus on God's word. When, when, I, when my voice went out, I had to begin to focus on God's word and God's word on healing, but it's life and it's health. And it was healing to my wife, it's healing to me, it's healing to you. And so the, the focus there, the challenge is, you got to fight for your right. <laughs> to what? No, not party, focus. <laughs> See, I, I just uncovered some of y'all's background right there. You're like, I know that. No. <laughs> Said, no, you, that, you will not forget that tonight, right? You leave here going, you got to fight for your right to focus. <laughs> some people are like, party? No. No, I'm talking to you. Where are you? <laughs> the, uh, the challenge is, and I think this is one of the biggest challenges we deal with in life. Is, the, is beginning to focus our thoughts. And the scripture said, if we can begin to attend to God's word. Now listen, when I say something like that, you have to be careful that the enemy doesn't steal that from you. Yeah. I was reading in the uh, Jesus parables and um, this, was, this was something that always bothered me. Mark 4, 14 through 16. So or so is the word. This is Jesus talking. So or so is the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And that always upset me. It's like, how in the world can he do that? Verse 16 gives us a little bit of, a, of an insight. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness. So when you hear me say something and we talk about and we read the verse, it says, my son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. One of the, the things that immediately hits people is, oh, I can't do that. You know, come on, Alan, I, I work in accounting. I can't just think about God's word while I'm doing accounting. Alan, I'm a programmer. Alan, I, I, I have to focus. I, I can't I've got to focus on, I can't just focus on God's word all the time. What's well, not talking about you quit your job or all you're doing is, is looking at a scripture all day. But what it's talking about is God's word. Because how many of you know, even on days where you're focusing, you stop for a moment and there go your thoughts. And so uh, I bring our thoughts back into, into line with God's word and, and not allowing the enemy. When you, when, you, when you hear something like that and you immediately think, and the devil will tell you, you can't do that. No one can do that. You can't, you can't keep your attention and your focus on God's word. No one can do that. You have to, instead of doing that, you have to receive that and go, thank God, God, if you said I can do that, Amen. I can do that. Amen. And that's how you keep the enemy from stealing the word out of your heart. You'll hear things, and I've heard things, and, 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 and the middle goes, mine. that didn't work. Well, guess what? It just got stolen. So the best way to do it is whenever you hear something like that and you're like, hmm, maybe, maybe you don't know. You're like, I don't, I don't even know how to do that. The best, word, best thing you can do is go, Lord, you say it. Thank God. Show me how to do it. Show me how I can focus my mind on your word and what you're saying and your principles instead of all this other junk that's going around. 
And some of the distractions, and Jesus talked about some of the distractions that we deal with. Jesus spoke of what distracts us. Same chapter of Mark, same parable, and he's given us some insight here. He said, now these in Mark 18, 19, these are the ones sown among thorns, sown God's word among thorns. They're the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So Jesus is talking about the things that actually begin to choke God's word out of our life and it doesn't produce fruit. And you say, well, God's word produces. It produces with those who receive it and act on it. Amen. And so when, when other things just completely wrap our focus, we get our focus wrapped around other things, it chokes it out. Now, I'm, I'm gonna give you one of the biggest things that we deal with. Worries, the cares of this life are the worries of this life. It's anxiety that brings disruption to the mind. It's a creative focus on the wrong things. Now, honestly, there's no condemnation. Every one of us has worried. Every one of us. You show me someone that goes, I've never worried in my entire life. You are lying through your teeth. We're going to pray for you. All of us have worried. Some to different extent. Some of us come from a legacy of worriers. Where it was like part of the family, it's like a family heirloom. Like, we, we worry because we care. <laughs> mama, my mama worried. Her mama worried. Grandma worried. Great grandma worried. You just come from a long line of worries. Some people talk about worrying like it's like it's, they're proud. But how many of you know that worry can absolutely wear you down? And again, I'm going to go back to the thing. Ever woke up in the night with a problem and you couldn't go back to sleep? And you got that thing wrong. And you know the thing about worry is you get creative with worry. Worrying just, you take it and ratchet it up a notch. You got a pain. And you've been dealing with the pain for a while and you wake up and you begin to envision I'm going to die. And then you envision your funeral. And then you see people that came, then you see people that didn't come, and now you're mad. <laughs> and that might be a ridiculous thing, but, it, but how many of you know worry can, can get... But how many of you know that worry can, can wear you down? Isn't it... Isn't it listen, I'm, I'm talking down to the people who are here. You can come here, and for about an hour, you don't worry. Right? You're hearing things, you're, you're worshiping, you're hearing, we're laughing together, we're having a good time together, we're not worried, and you can hit the parking lot. <laughs> Walking out the door, and the problems come back. And you can worry about them. And here's the thing is, and, and, and they can wear you down. I don't think anyone ever said, you know, worrying, Alan, is the best thing that ever happened to me. I just worried <laughs> and worried. Because we're talking about inner health. And worrying is, is taking fear, and, and, and then we get creative with it. And we worry, and Jesus talked about the cares of this world. People worry about, what do people think about me? How are we going to do this? Worry about what's going to happen. All these things. You say, well, yeah, but, you know, that's just life, and you have to worry. No, thank God we don't. I've got a great verse for you. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious, you say worried for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, this is something that you'll have to practice. This is not something that you go, oh, okay. And you, do, you practice this. But if you practice it, you'll get better at it. And, and, and practice it, well, how, how do you do it? Okay, let, let's say you're worried about a child or a grandchild that, that's going in the wrong direction. And you just say, Lord, 
I'm lifting them up. And I thank you. I planted good seeds in them. I thank you, Lord, that you can send someone across their path to water that seed. I'm claiming them for the kingdom. And Lord, I, I, I give this situation to you. I can't fix it. And worrying's not going to change it. I give it to you. I ask you for your help. And Lord, I thank you that you're working on my behalf. Amen. Now you'll take three steps. And the thoughts will come. What are you going to do? And this is where, this is where the practice is. Learning just to say, no, I've given this to the Lord. He's real. God's real. And our prayers are not bouncing off the ceiling. He hears them. And when we pray according to his will, how many know it's according to his will that your children all come to him and get saved? And so, that's a big one. What about you're worried about what's going on in your job? You're like, Lord, I'm, I'm having some conflict in, my, in, in where I work. I ask you for wisdom. I ask you for help. I ask you that you give me the solution for this. That I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to just bear the burden of it. Lord, I'm giving this to you. You're bigger than this. And you'll help me. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And what we're doing is we're, we're going, did you hear what I said? Thank you. Thank you for helping. And so when the thoughts want to come back, because they will, because we get, we have mental patterns just like we have physical patterns. You probably brush your teeth and put your clothes on the very same way. You develop a physical pattern. But you have mental patterns that are just as real. And so there's a, a mental thought and a mental pattern. And so what we're learning to do is take God's word and we're going to break that. Say, no, I gave that to the Lord and I'm not going to worry about it. Now listen, I want to tell you something. Everybody's got to do this. I say, well, Alan, you don't have to do this. You're a pastor. <laughs> no, no. Everybody has to do this. But worrying wears you down. And I've spent nights that I've gotten up and I've woken up in the middle of the night and had a problem that hit me and I start just, I start running around and, and, and the enemy will help you here. And he'll, help, he'll put it on a loop. You know what I mean by a loop? It just continually plays and continually plays. You need something to be able to break that pattern. And so this is where we come in. Now, if you've got scriptures that you can stand on, one of the biggest ones I stand on is James, the first chapter. It said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for you. Doubts is like a, a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. But we can ask in faith. How many know God knows what to do? He has wisdom. So we can ask him. And then we say, so here, here we do. Lord, thank you for the wisdom. I didn't know what to do. Let me close with this. I, and you've heard me tell this. Some of you heard me tell, but we always have new people, so fresh me. <laughs> so here's, here's the deal. When I, was, when I was in North Carolina, went to start a church in North Carolina, it did not work. And so we backed it up and worked for my dad for a while. And I'm just, I'm languishing there. Languishing. Nice word for having a really difficult time. And I'm, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I tried to start churches in North Carolina. It wasn't working. I couldn't find a place. I couldn't, couldn't get any peace. I got job offers that would have just pulled us out of our financial hole. We were in a hole financially. I had a job offer that would pull me completely out of that, and I passed it up. Because in my heart, I knew that wasn't the right thing. And I'm just stumped. And I'm reading in my devotions one morning. Thank God for devotion. And I'm reading, and I read James. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And I thought, you know, Lord, <laughs> I just need to ask you. And, I, and so I, I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about this church. I don't, about starting a church here in North Carolina. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Lord, I ask you for your wisdom. You know. And Lord, I want to thank you for an answer. Amen. Closed my Bible. Went to work. I've been to work about 30 minutes and the phone rings and the friend picks up. He goes, Alan. I said, hey, man. He said, man, I was thinking about you. He said, 
Brother, what are you going to do? You've been here in North Carolina a long time. Nothing's working. What are you going to do? I'm thinking, I'm thinking that sounds just like the enemy. That's his favorite thing. What are you going to do? 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 Like, shut up. <laughs> and I was about to say, man, I, and I caught myself. I said, you know, I said, I found this verse in James. I said, if I asked the Lord for wisdom, he would give me wisdom. I said, I asked the Lord for wisdom this morning. And I trust he's going to show me what to do. And my Christian brother friend went, oh. <laughs> okay, listen, when someone tells you they're believing God in an area, even if you think, you just go, praise God, brother. Praise God. Go for it. He's like, oh. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> it was an old phone. <laughs> this was in the 80s. <laughs> I miss those days where you could just do a hang up. <laughs> it's hard to punch the phone and get that same. Anyway. <laughs> I'm the only one. I'm just saying what y'all think all the time. <laughs> but for uh, the next few, next few days, the thought would begin to come. What do you want to do? What are you going to do? And I would just say, Lord, I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you. I asked for wisdom. I thank you for it. I couldn't write it down. I didn't know what it was, but I believe that the Lord would give us wisdom. If we ask for wisdom, he's not going to withhold it. He is generous. He will give. All I need to do is just stay in some level of faith instead of doubting him going, I don't, I prayed it didn't happen. I just kept saying, thank you, Lord, for wisdom. Two weeks later, I'm in a meeting and a, and a preacher said something. He said, you know, if we're not getting answers, sometimes we're asking the wrong questions. And I went, I'm not a demonstrative guy in church. I'm very quiet. I'm like, amen, praise God. But I felt like going, yes. <laughs> because I knew immediately that's the problem. I kept saying, Lord, where do you want me to start a church in North Carolina? Where do you want me to start a church in North Carolina? I changed it. I said, Lord, do you want me to start a church in North Carolina? No. I, t I looked at Joe. I said, I got our answer. And with two more weeks, we were heading back to Texas. And the Lord gave wisdom. Hallelujah. Yes. That doesn't work because I'm a preacher. That works because it's in the Bible. And it's a promise for all of God's children. Amen. If anyone lacks wisdom. So I don't know why. That was not in my notes tonight. But somebody needed it. And we'll take it. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord. You are so gracious, so giving. And Father, there are people in here tonight that need just to ask you for wisdom and to believe that you'll give it to them, and you will. So Lord, I thank you. There'll be some changes coming because of what was said and a seed that was planted, and your word is true, and we thank you for that. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here and you came and say, you know what, Alan, I don't even have a relationship with the Lord, or I'm not sure if I do or not, or I've gotten away from him. And I want to come back. I, I, I don't want to live this way. I, I want God. I want to be connected to him in my life. Uh, would you pray for me? We're going, to, we're going to do it. We're going to do exactly that. We're going to pray. We're not going to have you stand up or come down to the front. But we are going to pray. And if you want our prayers for that, I'm, I am going to ask you to do one thing. Just simply slip your hand up across in the solid and say, I want you to pray for me. I need the Lord in my life or I need to come back to him. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up real quick. Thanks. Got it? Thanks. Good. Good, good, good. Thank you. You can put your hands down. We're going to pray. If you didn't lift your hand, you wanted to. You can still jump in on this prayer. And we're going to pray with you as a church family online. If you're by yourself, pray it out loud. If you're with someone else, you can pray it quietly. But pray this with us. Just right out of your heart. Say, Dear Lord, I know mankind needs a Savior. I know I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And God raised you from the dead. So right now, I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior, as the one who forgives me and restores me. Thank you, Lord. My past is forgiven. I have a relationship with you. I'm a new creation in Christ because I said yes to you. No, head's still bowed just for a moment. Father, thank you for those that prayed that prayer. Father, for those of us 
who've come to you over the years, we, we're always reminded how much we appreciate our salvation. For those who've come back, for those of you who come for the very first time, we rejoice with them if walking out of darkness into light, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us, if you're online, there's a there's a something you can scan. You can scan it if you're here. If you're here, there's a card, and you can pick it up and and drop it in one of the boxes in the back. We're gonna pray for you. We do it every week. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. We love you guys. We're praying for you. Have a great week. Thank you.